What's up, guys? So Flex Friedman here interviews Mark Zuckerberg round two, asks him about censorship again. I think this is a very important segment. I think this is the most important segment in the whole Lex Friedman podcast with Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, we should go ahead and listen to this. Good question from uh, Lex Friedman, not going to lie. We're going to give him credit for that. I'm interested in your opinion, guys, on this subject. Leave them down below and let's just jump in. Let me ask about something you've faced in terms of moderation is uh, pressure from different sources, pressure from governments. Uh, I want to ask a question, how to withstand that pressure for uh, a world where AI moderation starts becoming a thing too. So what's um, Meta's approach to, um, to resist the pressure from governments and other interest groups in terms of what uh, to moderate and not? Really strong question from Lex Friedman. I don't know why he <clears throat> acted very uncomfortable asking that question. That's pretty weird. Uh, I wonder if he just <laughs> makes that constipated face every time he asks a question. But uh, let's go ahead and hear the Zuckerberg answer. It's very interesting how he gets these guys on his show. That's pretty cool. I don't know that there's like a one-size-fits-all answer. I swear, this guy doesn't even look like he's human. He looks like he's AI. That. I mean, I think we basically have the principles around... You know, we want to allow people to express as much as possible, but we have developed clear categories of things that we think are, are wrong, that we don't want on our services, and we build tools to try to moderate those. Wait, so, so wait, 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 wait. How did you develop these categories that you think are wrong? What's the criteria? Who's making up this criteria? And who's putting the ranges on this criteria? Who are you guys? Who is this people? And why, why Why were you guys the chosen ones, the arbiters of truth? And what if you are wrong? Who's held accountable? You're just going to apologize? I have so many questions. This is, he says this so nonchalantly, like, like he wasn't prepared for this question. Like this is literally what all the media training he does is for this kind of question. This is the whole media. Literally Lex Friedman sent him a list of questions and this, he trained an hour and a half on this. <clears throat> this is what we get oh my god listen to this shit holy moly allow people to express as much as possible but we have developed clear categories of things that we think are, are wrong that we don't want on our services and we build tools to try to moderate those so then the question is okay what do you do when a government says that they don't want something on on the service and i think we have we have a bunch of um principles around how we deal with that because on on the one hand what we are going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hire governmental uh people to do our criteria moderation anyways they're the ones that are going to tell us from the set they're going to be in the foundation they're going to be part of our team i bet you they hired fbi agents or whatever governmental agency. I bet you that's how this is working. Because they're just there's just a set group of people that develops this criteria. And so if you're there in the foundation, if there's a you know democratically elected government and people around the world just have different values in different places, then you know should we as a you know California-based company tell them that something that they have decided is unacceptable actually like that we need to be able to 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 express that i mean i think that that's there's a certain amount of um of hubris in that what what about all the pride flags what about that charlie hebdo every time there's a terrorist attack you demonize the muslims and you uh, victimize all the europeans every time there's an attack you give us a new filter the pride flag filters you're 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 basically demonizing us that's crazy what about man what about all the censorship you're doing that what in america itself censoring uh, stories news stories news articles people mo just blocking people from existence um but then i think there are other cases where you know, it's, so it's sensory not. stories like the the New York uh, Post, the Joe Biden. 
like a little more autocratic and you know you have Laptop. the dictator leader who's just trying to crack down on dissent and you know the people in a country are really um not aligned with that um and it's not necessarily against their culture but um but the the, the person who's, who's leading it is, is just trying to push in a certain direction um these are very complex questions uh do you understand what he's talking about He's talking about the FBI comes to us telling us we need to topple governments. Can you help? And he's telling you these are the kinds of dilemmas I have to sleep with at night. And this is why I look like a zombie that hasn't slept in three, four days. And need brains right now. I swear if he's not taking some kind of medication like... Some kind of heavy, heavy dose of Adderall or something. I'll be surprised. This, this is not a normal look, bro. Plus, what happened to your forehead, bro? Who ate, somebody ate half of your forehead. But I, I think so. It's it's difficult to have have a one size fits all um, approach to it. But in what? general, we're we're pretty active in in kind of advocating and pushing back on on um, requests to take things down. Um, Active, active. The second the government asks us to do something, we will topple the government. Hell yeah, let's jump in. But honestly, the thing that I think a request to censor things is one thing, um, and that's obviously bad. But where we um, draw a much harder line is on requests for access to information, right? Because you know, if you can, if you get told that you can't say something, I mean, that's bad, right? I mean, that that you know is is you know, obviously. A, and they still comply. Oh my God! Access information. Like, where's your? Where's his house? Tell us. Violates your sense and, and freedom of expression at some level, but um, but a government getting access to data in a way that seems um, like it would be unlawful in in, in our country yeah. um, exposes people to real physical harm, um, and that's something that in general we take very seriously and then so there's that flows through like all of our policies and in a lot of ways right it's uh, by the time you're actually like litigating with a government or pushing back on them that's pretty late in the funnel i'd say so he's telling you we can't even say no to the government whatever they ask us ask us to do even though we feel bad about it and by the way does mark zuckerberg at all look concerned to you be honest to me guys he looks like he's just looking for more adderall anyways so whenever the government asks us for anything, we're obliged, obliged, we have to, uh, we're obligated to do this. Much obliged. We have to do it. We have to respond to their requests, no matter what. And then even when we do try to not respond, we feel really bad about giving them the address of this random girl on Facebook uh, that she's in jail now. Um, well, it's just too late. A bunch of this stuff starts a lot higher up in the decision of where do we put data centers. Then um, you know, there are a lot of countries where you know we may have a lot of people using the service in a place. It might be you know good for the service in some ways, um, good for those people if we could reduce the latency by having a data center nearby them. But you know for whatever reason we just feel like hey, this government does not have a good track record on on. Um, basically not trying to get access to people's data. And at the end of the day, I mean, if you put a data center in a country and the government wants to get access to people's data, then, you know, they do at the end of the day have the option of having people show up with guns and taking it by force. So I, I, I think that there's like a lot of decisions that go into like how you architect the systems. You see what he's saying? What he's saying is he literally has no control over the data he's collecting he cannot even secure it. He's telling you to your face, there's no way for me to secure it. Uh, especially when I open up different database centers in different uh, locations, especially in bad governments, which I continue to do so because it makes me more money. Um, years in advance of, of these actual confrontations that end up being really important. So you put the protection of people's data as a very, very high priority. But in that the, I think is a there are more harms that I think can be associated with that, and and I think that that ends up being a more critical thing to defend against governments. Um, then you know, whereas you know, Ex did, did you just hear what he just said? He literally just said, 
I would re- I th- it's there's a line where after a certain point it's safer to give up the data than to try to find the gov- fight the government over it. So there's no security of your data at all. If you guys want to continue listening to this, I guess I'll give you another 30 seconds. If another government has a different view of what should be acceptable speech in their country, especially if it's a democratically elected government, and you know, it's, then I, I, th- I think that there's a certain amount of deference that you should have to that. So it's, uh, that's speaking more to the direct. Yep, that's about it. I mean, there's nothing else you want to hear about that. Wow. That, that's pretty amazing what he just said. That's pretty profound that he just liberally just said that uh, Facebook easily could be maliciously used by governments and he has no way to stop it, um, which I guess we, we, we knew it, but it's kind of crazy to believe that we live in an extremely fascistic world. I mean, it's not really just the West, it really, he's right, any other country that has a Facebook database could potentially just run up into the building and take it over. So he's he's pretty correct on that, but yeah, uh, pretty profound, kind of uh, telling you that, I mean, it, now you understand the moral compass that Zuckerberg is acting behind, he's like, he's, he's still trying to save people's lives, in his opinion, by complying with the government without making this all public, you know? Makes sense.